What the hell? Every time I watch Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, I inevitably end up asking myself some variation of that question. Who the hell does this guy think he is? How the hell does he do this every week? And most importantly, why the hell did the football gods put this mutant in the AFC right when my own team, the Texans, finally got a quarterback that wasn't terrible? We had a chance, or at least I thought we had a chance, and then all of a sudden this asshole showed up, got some magic quarterback pixie dust sprinkled on him by Andy Reid, and next thing you know, 90% of the conference basically has no shot now. Ever. We thought we had it bad with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning running the show for the last 20 years. Oh, we thought that was the worst it could ever get. How stupidly naive were we back then in the good old days when the only thing we had to worry about was New England throwing it to running backs 40 times a game and that five-headed goober screaming Omaha for three straight hours. That was the pinnacle of suck for most of my life, but it was nothing compared to what we're all about to have to go through for the next 15 seasons. Patrick Mahomes is so good that it almost defies description. I legitimately think that he is the apex of the sport that has been building up for a hundred years, because nobody has ever played at this level before. Hell, it's almost fitting that the NFL is in its hundredth season now, because Pat Mahomes, both figuratively and literally, is a once every century kind of phenom. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback ever, just in terms of accomplishments, but Mahomes might be the best quarterback ever when it's all said and done. He's one of those rare athletes that is so far above everyone else that you're not entirely sure that he's really human. I was watching Mahomes take on the Raiders this past week, and while he did get off to a bit of a slow start while he and Andy poked and prodded and tried to figure out a way to attack that Oakland defense, once they did find those cracks in the armor, Pat went Super Saiyan and the game was basically over only 15 minutes later. I have never in my life seen a quarterback unleash that kind of onslaught in just one quarter, and I'm not sure if I ever will again, unless it's Mahomes topping himself. 70% completions, 278 yards, four touchdowns, all in one quarter, I mean it was historically good production. But after watching that complete and utter domination by one player, I wanted to highlight the two best throws of the entire game, and two of the best throws that Mahomes has ever made, period, that didn't actually count. They were each called back by holding penalties, but they were so ridiculous that I actually found myself even more impressed by these two technically irrelevant plays than any of Pat's actual completions. Because if anything, these two throws illustrate just how screwed the rest of us are with him in the league. The first one comes with about six and a half minutes left in the second quarter. It's third and 10 from the Oakland 32, and Mahomes is trying to get Kansas City out of a bit of a jam here after two straight incompletions on deep shots. Oakland has kind of an ambiguous single high look here before the snap. It could be anything from a cover one hole, maybe they bail out of it to a cover three, possibly even a cover six cloud to help handle those back shoulder balls that Robinson had been beating them on all day. There's a lot of different possibilities here, and most of them involve a single high safety in the middle of the field. But the Raiders are bluffing. They aren't really running a single high coverage of any kind, and it's actually a post-snap roll to a Tampa 2 zone, which is really sneaky. And that's because the Chiefs have a curls concept on here that is honestly not a good call against Tampa 2. Against cover three, sure, curls can work because you can occupy both seams on either side of that safety with curls on inside releases, and then kind of sneak one in underneath him that can settle down in that little soft spot in the intermediate middle, and even if those curls are covered up by the two outside corners matching them step for step, and the free safety sitting on that middle curl aggressively, you've still got the flats wide open for a little catch and run to the running back or the tight end that can move the chains with Yak. So overall, this is a really great call against cover three because of how the zones are distributed, but that being said, it's a really bad one against Tampa 2 for the exact same reason. You can see here after the snap when they roll into that coverage, there's really nothing there. Tampa 2 is almost sort of like a cover 3 because there are technically three deep zone defenders in it, but the deep middle zone defender is more shallow than a typical free safety would be in a traditional three deep coverage, so these curls over the middle that would be well underneath a free safety normally are not given nearly as much space by a Tampa 2 linebacker. And on top of that, the hook zone defenders are always wide enough to basically eliminate any of those other seam throws that work well against traditional cover threes as well. 
The curl to flat zone defenders on the outside are also shallow enough to limit any yards after catch underneath if you have to check it down into the flats. So everything that makes this curls call great against cover three in terms of alignment and zone responsibilities is terrible against Tampa two, which is why Oakland showed cover three before the snap and then rolled to Tampa two after the snap because they wanted to bait Mahomes into keeping this play call on and not changing it at the line. They knew they could jump these curls if they used a little disguise and some mind games, so they went for it. However, playing mind games like this and honestly executing a perfect bait and switch on defense kind of doesn't matter when you're going against a one of a kind quarterback that can make you wrong anyway. Watch how Mahomes handles this post snap coverage role that against most quarterbacks would probably work perfectly. As he's taking his drop, he reads the mic sinking back, and immediately he's thinking, oh crap, this isn't cover three, I'm in trouble, I gotta go to plan B. And what separates Mahomes from basically any other human being on planet Earth is that his plan B is violating almost every single major rule of playing quarterback and still making it work. He knows he's gotta buy time, and he knows he has to manipulate the defense all by himself, or he's dead, so he escapes the pressure right up the middle, and watch how he uses his body to influence really good coverage into totally breaking down. When he squirts out the front of the pocket, he's running to his right, and looking to his right, which draws every single defender basically one zone over to their left. The backside gets abandoned because nobody expects a quarterback to throw literally across the whole field behind them while running the other way, off balance, without even looking first, but Mahomes is setting that exact kind of throw up from the moment he starts climbing that pocket. When he runs to his right, a lot of the time he's gonna throw left because he knows the defense doesn't believe he's gonna throw left. They're not conditioned to play against a quarterback that has the balls or the talent to make that kind of throw, but Pat is different. He does this on purpose to break down a coverage and set up a throw that truly should not even be an option in the first place, and quite frankly, he's one of only two quarterbacks in the entire league, maybe three or four at most if you include Rodgers, Wentz, and Wilson, that can even attempt to do this, and he's certainly the best at it. We've seen quarterbacks break down a coverage with eye manipulation before, but breaking them down with full body manipulation and mobility and doing it while throwing across the field off platform while barely even looking at the target. I mean, Pat's the only quarterback that I've ever seen do that with any sort of consistency, and it's just unspeakably filthy. But that wasn't even the craziest throw that he made in just that one game, because one quarter later in the third, while already up by three possessions, mind you, Mahomes had one of the most jaw-dropping touchdowns that I've ever seen, even though it was, again, taken away from him on another penalty. It was the perfect display of just how talented he really is. This is again on third and long, third and 14 to be exact, and the Raiders are showing all-out pressure. Knowing them, they aren't going to bring all seven rushers here though, they likely will drop out, and this free safety is so far off the number three inside that it's highly unlikely we're looking at a blitz zero here, because if it was blitz zero, that safety would probably be much closer. So Mahomes is comfortable with just having six men in to protect against seven guys in the box, because more than likely, not all seven of them are gonna rush. And the concept that Mahomes is working with here is called slice. They ran this with Tyreek Hill all the time when he was healthy, and it's great for them matchup-wise because it helps get their fastest players alone on islands deep down the field where they're at their most dangerous. A slice route can usually do one of two things. Either A, if it's against zone coverage, it can help give your slot receiver that runs a legit 4-3 a one-on-one -on -one matchup deep down the field with that free safety as he's crossing his face and making him turn all the way around to get into position, which is usually an immediate win for him, or B, if it's against man and the free safety gets moved out of the way by Mahomes' eyes looking at that curl on the other side, you can sometimes again sneak that slice route right behind him over the top while that's covered by a much slower nickel corner that cannot keep up step for step. It's a man killer, it's a zone killer, it's honestly an everything killer as long as your slot receiver can do well in a track meet. And believe me, Meikle Hardman qualifies as that kind of deep threat. So when Mahomes sees that free safety cheat to the wrong side after the snap, he knows he's got Hardman about to streak right behind him on that slice route for an easy touchdown. All he's gotta do is throw him a good ball and help Hardman run under it without having to slow down, which would let LaMarcus Joyner catch up and break up the pass. But here's where the difficulty of this throw comes in, because just throwing a deep ball against a busted coverage isn't that amazing all by itself. 
What is amazing, however, is him knowing that he doesn't have time to actually step into the throw because he's got Vontez Perfect breaking through protection right up the middle and just winging this thing off his back foot so that he can get it out in time. The ball still somehow flew perfectly 53 yards down the field while being placed in the exact spot it needed to be placed for Hardman to take it for 72 yards and the score. And I still, even while producing this episode and watching this clip a hundred times over, have no idea how this throw was even physically possible. Holding penalty taking this away or not, this is quite frankly one of the most hilariously unfair things I've ever seen take place on a football field. What are you supposed to do about this? It's third and 14. They're calling deep shots while having an 18 point lead. He's got pressure in his face and he's still throwing a 72 yard bomb off his back foot on a whim like it's nothing. I mean, Pat Mahomes is basically just screwing around at this point just to see what his limits are. And so far he hasn't found them. I mean, just what the hell is the defense supposed to do about this? The guy is playing with an entirely different set of rules than everybody else. He's like LeBron or Gretzky or Messi. He's the one guy on a field full of actual professionals that makes everyone else look like amateurs. The narrative going into this season was that Mahomes would regress, that there's no way he could maintain last year's level of play, let alone last year's stats, but holy f he's even better. 2018, if you can believe it, was basically just a warm up. Through all 16 regular season games last year, Mahomes threw 92 deep passes of 20 or more yards down the field, the most in the league. That was 15.9% of his total passing attempts, which is extremely high. And he completed 51% of those passes while throwing 15 deep touchdowns to only six picks and a 106.4 rating on those attempts. All of those numbers were historically insane. Through two games this year though, he's already thrown five deep touchdowns on 66.7% deep accuracy with a 149.3 rating while throwing deep on 19.5% of his throws. This guy is on pace to throw 40 touchdowns just on deep balls alone this year at this point. And I know you're going to say, well, Brett, there's no way he maintains that pace. He probably won't even throw half of that. Um, are you sure? Have you been paying attention to any of the other precedents that this guy has shattered in the last 12 months? Because in the last 15 seasons, nobody has thrown more than 16 deep touchdowns in a single year. And that was Tom Brady in 07 and Drew Brees in 2011. Mahomes is already a third of the way there in two weeks without Tyreek Hill. And while having one of those deep touchdowns taken away from him by a penalty. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We have never seen this ever. This is the highest level that I've ever seen any football player play at any position bar none. He'll have down games every now and then like everybody does and he won't win a Super Bowl every year, but the total package in terms of who the most feared human being on a football field is, by the time his career is over, I think he's going to be a category of one. Brady's going to have the rings, Manning's going to have the MVPs, but in 50 years when my grandkids ask me who the best pure football player I ever saw was, I think I already know my answer. Patrick Mahomes the second. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode and hopefully you watch yesterday's preview of this huge Chiefs versus Ravens game coming up this weekend as well. Both shows are of course supported by our season long sponsor MyBookie who is still offering that gigantic 100% deposit bonus on all initial signup deposits up to $1000 if you decide you want to bet on any of these games this weekend of course. You can also bet on the MVP winners, Super Bowl winners, division winners, prop bets every week. I mean, you name it, you can bet on it. So if you want to maybe put a little something down on this Chiefs Raven showdown or any of the other really good matchups we've got for week three, hit that link in the description and use promo code Brett, which I think should be automatically filled out for you already, I believe. And that will give you the deposit bonus to work with to double your deposit, which ultimately doubles your bankroll so that when you win, you get more back to keep building that bankroll even more every single time and getting the most possible mileage out of your initial signup. Uh, assuming you win, of course, you know, some sometimes we have hard luck and we bet on the Dolphins to cover a 19 point spread uh, and they totally screw us over. <laughs> but uh, Yeah. 
I'm clearly not bitter. But again, if you're interested in making these games a little bit more interesting this weekend, maybe even betting on the Dolphins game so that it's remotely bearable to watch, hit that link in the description and you're good to go. As for me, I'll be back tomorrow with another Picks Against the Spread preview. Not sure which game yet, but please feel free to suggest some in the comments below uh, that you want me to talk about in detail because there are a lot to choose from. And of course, I'll also be back next week with another Film Room episode and another game pick breakdown. So a lot coming up in the future. Hopefully you guys like it. And uh, yeah, until tomorrow. Later.